guys here welcome back thanks so much for clicking this is what makes the muslims so confident about their religion let's watch as we proceed i will explain the verse and what allah baridala says about this subject of miracles but let me explain to you what is a miracle a mojiza a miracle is an impossibility something beyond human endeavor human effort for example one of us while this meeting is carrying on he falls unconscious and he expires a doctor is called up and the doctor certifies that the person is dead another doctor is brought forward to give his opinion and he also certifies that the man is dead take the body away prepare for burial but there comes along a man of god sees this dead person dead body and he says he commands kum bi iznillah wake up get up in the name of allah and the person gets up alive and well we say it's a miracle because it was an impossibility certified by two doctors and yet the person has come back to life miracle but suppose the man was dead for three days put in a mortuary in a morgue and after three days somebody comes along the man is gone as hard as rock and he shouts at the cops whom be is nillah arise in the name of allah and the man comes back from the dead we say that is a greater miracle because it's a greater impossibility but after the person is dead and buried his bones have rotted in the grave and somebody cries whom be is nillah and the person gets out of the grave alive breathing well we say that is still a greater miracle so greater the impossibility the greater the miracle i hope this definition is simple enough for everybody to grasp now in that sense the quran is a miracle of eloquence in the first instance you see nations before islam were sent prophets and mankind had a tendency to demand proof by some supernatural acts hazrat musa alaihi salam the holy prophet moses he was given a type of miracle which was akin to magic he was among the magicians in, in egypt so he had to contend with these magicians and allah gave him a miracle to confound these magicians firaun thinking that musa alaihi salam was another magician he brought forth his own magicians to play the part and the magicians the egyptian magicians they had little little magic sticks or magic wands and they threw them on the ground and all these little sticks became little little snakes serpents allah bari taala had already given hazrat musa alaihi salam an experience with his rod on the mount now he knew what he was to do so he threw his rod and the rod turned into a serpent and this serpent swallowed up all the little snakes of the egyptians and hazrat musa alaihi salam picked up the serpent and it turned back once more into a rod and the egyptian magicians they realized that this is no magic this is not hypnotism this is not mesmerism because to hypnotize a person you cast a spell you make the person to see what is really not there it's an illusion is created the sticks you can make it appear like snakes by casting a spell but here all the little sticks had vanished into the serpent and the serpent was a rod and the rod was no thicker than what it was before a great miracle the egyptian magicians they confessed that this is no magic this is something beyond it was a miracle so allah gives miracles according to the mentality the needs of the people people with magical minds they were confounded with magic superior magic real magic hazrat isa alaihi salam jesus christ when he appears on the scene he comes among a people who were steeped in greek medicine they were performing wonders with, with medicine so allah gives him healing powers healing those born blind a person who goes blind by shock or by some damage infection is quite a different thing from one who is born blind and allah bari taala gave him those powers of healing those who are born blind and the lepers and he gave life back to the dead revive the dead bismillah type of miracle to convince the people our nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam he comes among a people who were boasting about their language the language was the boast their eloquence their poetry they said we are an eloquent people we are the arabs and the rest of the world is ajam dumb compared to us they boasted they would ask this is you in your language you ajami how many words have you got for a horse in your language synonyms for a horse no oh, man said so maybe half a dozen he said you see we can give you 100 in our language he says how many words synonyms you have for a sword anybody would say half a dozen he said you see in my language i can give you 100 so you see we are the eloquent people and you people are all dumb ajam so among such a people when he comes along the greatest miracle that he gave was the quran that the language of the quran in the first instance 
sense was beating the people. And they realized, people with sense, that this is not poetry, this is not prose, this is something beyond our understanding, and people accepted the faith. But let me tell you what a non-Muslim they have to say about the Quran and its eloquence. A.J. Arbery, an Englishman who translated the Holy Quran into English, is a foreigner. He had just learned Arabic. Arabic is not his mother tongue. In his preface he says, whenever I hear the Quran chanted, meaning beautifully recited, it is as though I'm listening to music. Underneath the flowing melody, there is sounding all the time the insistent beat of a drum. It is like the beating of my heart. You can't help vibrating on the wavelength of the Quran. Then, Reverend Bosworth Smith, a Christian missionary, he wrote a book on Muhammad and Muhammadanism. In his book, he says about our Nabi Karim وسلم, and the Holy Quran, he says, illiterate himself, an ummi, scarcely able to read or write. He was yet the author of a book, which we do not agree, that Muhammad وسلم, was not the author of the book. He says, according to his belief, understanding that Muhammad وسلم, is the author of this book, which is a poem, a code of laws, a book of common prayers, and a Bible all in one, and is a reverence to this day by a sixth of the whole human race as a miracle of purity, of style, of wisdom and of truth. It is the one miracle claimed by Muhammad. His standing miracle, he called it. And a miracle indeed it is. Without doubt, it is a mochiza. An enemy testifies that this is a miracle indeed. And Allah draws our attention to this. In the verse I read to you from the Holy Quran, from Surah An-Kabut, chapter 29, Allah says, Waqalu, and they say, to the Muslims. So why is not a sign, a miracle, a mujiza given to him by his Lord? This is a demand. They had heard about the miracles of Moses. They had heard about the miracles of Jesus. Now they want some similar performance from the Prophet of Islam. They were trying to humor him. They were trying to make a mockery of him. They said, look, O Muhammad, you say you are a prophet of God. Why don't you perform some miracles like the prophets of old? Like this Mount Ahad outside Makkah. Why don't you turn it into gold? Then we will know that you are a true man of God. Or put up a ladder up into heaven. Go up that ladder and bring a book down. Then we will believe that you are a true messenger of God. Or make rivers to gush out in the desert. Then we will know that you are somebody that we can hearken to. Waqalu, and they say, Lawla unzil alayhi ayatun rabbi. In answer to that, Allah makes him to say, Pull, tell them, Inna mal ayatun in the Allah. So most certainly signs, miracles are in the hands of my Lord, in the hands of Allah. Inna ma ana nazirun mubin. I am only a warner, clear cut, straightforward, plain, simple. Awalam yakfi. Is this not enough for you? Awalam yakfi him. Anna anzalna alaykal kitaba. Yutla alayhim. So is this not enough for them that you rehearse to them, that you read to them a book which we have revealed to you, O Muhammad? Is that not enough for them? To you, an ummi, a person who doesn't know how to read or write. You are rehearsing this book to them. Is that not enough in itself that it should be a miracle? You know this human child, this little child, Muhammad. He grew up in front of your eyes. And up to the age of 40, he was like your own child. You know every move he made, every things that he did. You know everything about him. And this man who had had no schooling, now he's coming along and rehearsing the book to them. Is that not enough as a miracle? The book itself, Allah says, is a miracle. And a miracle indeed it is. Wow. Ah. So the old message was all about the miracle in Islam. And the greatest miracle in Islam is the Quran. You know, most people always ask Muslims, what is, what is the miracle that you guys get? Or what kind, what kind of miracle can you guys perform? Like Christianity, which you, you know there are miracles in the Bible. So some people normally be like, what does Islam have concerning that? Do they have miracle? And you know, at first, I mean, it explained to us what miracle is. A miracle is beyond human imagination. It's something that humans, humans cannot, you know, solve. It's something impossible for humans to solve. It's only something that is possible for God to do. And you get instances of, you know, people rising from dead. This, even though the thought uh, uh, example was kind of scary because I don't know if somebody like that has ever come out from the grave before. Like grave, grave, grave. I don't, I don't know. That was kind of scary. So he explained to us, you know, the greatest miracle in Islam is Quran because anytime people come across Quran, just by reading the Quran, 
no, the Quran use them. You hear some instances that some, some people will say, ah, after I read the Quran, I didn't know what happened to me. I started shedding tears. My life changed. I saw it in a better light. I had a dream. I saw, you know, I had a dream. I was being told, oh, I should come to the light. You know, a lot of people have said so many things. I've given so many testimony regarding the Quran, how powerful the Quran is, how the Quran changed their life, you know, powerfully. How the Quran changed their life. So she, he's just trying to say that the Quran is enough miracle for Muslims. That one is enough. When you read your Quran, you get to know your Quran. Even having your Quran with you, without even going deep into it, you can receive signs and wonders. Things that are impossible for human to understand, or things that, are, that humans cannot really explain. So, we're just trying to let us know that yes, so this is what is uh, Islam hold on to when it comes to miracle, and that's the greatest miracle of all. That no other miracle beats it when it comes to Islam. That the greatest miracle is Quran. So many, you know. Um, non Muslim have tried to, you know, he spoke about one of non Muslims that tried to translate the Quran into his own words. And he said, Ah, one thing I noticed about this Quran is that when I listen to the Quran chats, that is Quran recitation, that I feel a melody in my heart, it's like a music, you know, it heals the soul, it calms him. That's why a lot of times when people listen to Quran recitation, they have this peace in their heart, it calms them down, it makes them feel so, so calm, peaceful. You know, they can't just imagine how they feel. They just, they, all they know is that they are being connected to, to somebody they cannot see and being connected to God. So either you listen to Quran recitation or you read the Quran, those two are the greatest miracle in Islam. That was a beautiful one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.